Hello TypeScript fans! Today I want to show you a very cool technique called branded types and I brought the Microsoft Windows calculator with me and we will implement some of its functionality using TypeScript to make our code more robust against user input errors. So maybe you've tried already to divide something by zero and when you do that here in the calculator, let's say 100 divided by zero, then uh, you will see an error that uh, we cannot divide by zero because there is uh, yeah, a huge discussion in, <laughs> in forums about if you can divide by zero or not and if it is defined or not and if it is then uh, plus infinity or minus infinity. And I leave this to mathematicians. Yeah, I just want us to avoid this at any cost that a user can divide by zero. Because here in the calculator, it throws an error and in TypeScript JavaScript, it actually prints infinity. Let me show that to you. Because we have here a function that just does the division. Yeah, it takes A and divides it by B. And uh, I have here like my divide function. Also, let's uh, name the X maybe B because then it fits better the concept of A and B here. And if B is 10, everything is fine, it will be 10. Yeah, let me prove that to you. <laughs> Yeah, first I also need to have a console log here, otherwise you won't see anything. And then if I execute my code, we'll have uh, the 10 here. But if I turn um, 10 into zero and I divide 100 by zero, then we'll get to see infinity. And this can be uh, problematic because now our code will continue using uh, infinity and we will um, get some weird states. Yeah, let's say I have something called C and I put uh, C to the result of um, 100 uh, divided by zero, then C will be infinity. And if I then log C plus one, then I will still have the infinity because infinity plus something is still like infinity. Um, and my code won't crash yet, will continue to calculate with this. And I want to avoid that. So this is where I will use branded types. And I will show you now how this technique is being built. So for a branded type, we need to create a new type. I will call it not zero because I want to avoid zeros here. And uh, I will say that this type is of type number. Now I just have a type alias. Yeah, it all starts with a type alias. The type alias is uh, called here not zero. And then I will make use of this type alias. So I will say that in the divide function, B must be of type not zero. It's still okay, yeah, because here B is a number and it fulfills the um, contract. It's compatible, yeah, like our zero here is compatible with our not zero type because it's simply a number. And this type compatibility doesn't help us much because it still doesn't avoid us to put in zero. So let's turn the not zero into a branded type. A branded type is actually just a convention. It's uh, nothing that TypeScript offers per se as a feature. It's something that you as a developer can make up. And we will make up a branded type by using an existing type here, type number, and we will combine it with a new type, which is an object literal. So we'll have here an object, and uh, we will say that this object has a property that we will call, it, call it brand, and this brand uh, we will um, assign it to a string, so we'll say that the property brand is in this case not zero. Yeah, this is an identifier. We can name this brand any way we like. Yeah, some people tend to call it, for example, type. Some call it brand. That's why it's called branded types. And the underscores um, are also just conventional. Yeah, you can use one or two, but most people use two to uh, signal that this property is not an actual property that you use to uh, calculate or print something. It's uh, just a meta property to indicate that this here is um, having a brand. Now you will see already that B is not allowed anymore to be put in. Yeah, because uh, the number cannot be assigned to the type uh, that has here this brand because with this intersection type here, yeah, intersection, we like uh, used uh, two types, we combined them and we created now a very weird type because number is a primitive type, 
But this here is a complex type. So we combined a primitive with uh, an object. And this is something that um, usually doesn't exist in nature. Yeah. So in the, in the nature of JavaScript, TypeScript, you, you don't have such things. Um, we see it like here, right? We cannot assign a number to this, but we also cannot assign an object to this. Yeah. If I would say, okay, this B here is now an object with the brand, then it's also not assignable because now this object cannot be assigned to this primitive. And that's what uh, will prevent us to input the number, but we don't have any means yet to um, make it work and to proceed further. And this is where we need the second part to make branded types really useful, which is creating a custom type guard or an assertion function. Let's start with a custom type guard. That uh, will be the easiest way to do it. So with a custom type guard, let me just uh, write one. We can say that the function is not zero. So I will create a function is not zero. That takes uh, an input of type unknown. Yeah, it's always better to use unknown than any. <laughs> so um, we pretend we don't know anything about that type. And then we will make um, a predicate. Um, so we will predict the type. Yeah, we don't know the type. We will predict the type. And um, this is then called uh, like type predicate. And the type predicate is written in TypeScript using the is keyword. So we will return a type predicate here. And uh, the type predicate says that the input is of type not zero. That's now here our type predicate. So what's the problem here? Ah, we need to return something because um, a type guard needs to return true or false. And we can uh, return true. Uh, typos, typos, typos. <laughs> we can return true, but then the check is not really valid yeah, because it will allow everything. Now uh, even B will, when assigned to zero, will pass that uh, check. So let's implement something that is more sophisticated. Yeah, We will say um, if our input is zero, then um, the check is false yeah, because the check says it uh, is uh, not zero. And when it's zero, it's, it's false. And when it's uh, not zero, which is the else case, yeah, uh, then uh, it's actually true. We can also like um, make that a little shorter. Just uh, use this uh, return uh, down here. So now we have the uh, is not zero check and this type predicate will turn anything that passes this check into a not zero type. Yeah, so our type inference here discovers that B is zero, but when we use now the is not zero function and we put in B, then on the next line B will be uh, of type not zero if it passes the check. So I said it already, if it passes this check, so we need an if condition, if uh, is not zero, then from here on TypeScript will know that B is not zero. Let me lock that B because here when I hover over the B, I will see now the type inference and it says uh, inside the if condition, it's of this branded type. Um, outside the if condition, it's not. Yeah, that's why we still see the error here. So we also have to put the function execution here inside the if condition to make it work. Let's see what we've achieved now. Now B is zero. And if I execute the code, it will probably not log anything because uh, this if condition is false. So the code in here won't be executed and we won't see anything on the console. If uh, B is something that is not zero, for example, a 10, then we will get to see our console log statement. Cool, so we implemented a nice type guard. But what I don't like personally is that we now indented our code and we uh, need to use another condition, this if condition. And uh, there is, uh, yeah, it can turn into like so-called spaghetti code if you have a lot of if conditions and indentations. Um, I would prefer to maybe have it like this, that we uh, do the check and then that we just in the next line execute the divide function. But uh, this is not possible here. Yeah, because uh, TypeScript cannot be uh, sure here that uh, B is uh, not zero. So we, in order to achieve that, need to use an assertion function. 
In the searching function, on the other hand, is also a little, some, yeah, I would say brutal, because it can crash your code if something is not um, yeah, fitting accordingly. And uh, this is what I will show you now. We can easily turn our um, type card here, our custom type card, into an insertion function. All we need is the asserts keyword. So this type predicate here will get uh, an asserts in the front. And uh, now we also need to change our return type because an assertion function doesn't return a boolean. An assertion function just makes a check and if the check doesn't pass, it will throw an error. Yeah, that's similar to the Microsoft calculator. So we saw here that it throws here an error. So I will also do the same. I will copy that error message and I will say that when the input is zero, I will throw a new error with that message. Now um, TypeScript will go through this and if it succeeds, then it will recognize input to be of type not zero. If this check is not succeeding, it will throw an error and it will crash our program. That's why it's guaranteed that after this year passes, B is of type not zero, of the branded type. Yeah, that's guaranteed now because if this check here is not successful, it will completely crash and not even reach it here. Yeah, so TypeScript now infers that uh, when this year passes, also this will pass with the respective type. Let me show that to you. For this case, I will um, first run it with the 10. So yeah, it will pass and be okay. So I also, Always forget to put a console lock. You won't see anything without it. So let me just rerun it and uh, you will see now the 10, yeah? Check passes and then the console lock is being executed. If I have a zero now, um, here it looks fine in the code, but in the actual execution at runtime, it will crash and send me this error. And this is where you need to be very careful with yeah, because it can lead to a runtime exception. And then maybe it's better to not run the code at all or not crash the code and use the type guard with an if. That's uh, depending on your use case. If you have like um, a try catch around it anyway to represent then errors into the UI like in the Microsoft calculator, then it's maybe better to use the assertion function. Also with an assertion function, um, you can um, prefix it here with um, assert to signal that this is an assertion function and not a type guard. This is what I would prefer. Let's review what we achieved now. Doing this gives us um, code that runs only in a preferred and in a controlled state because I will take this code here and I can only put B into the divide function when I verified B. When I don't verify B, I cannot put it in. Let me remove this um, line here by just commenting it. Yeah, you will see now that um, there will be an error by the compiler already. So using a branded type, which is um, yeah, an object combined with something primitive, uh, when using such a type that can only be assigned by a type predicate, we will enforce our code along its whole life cycle to always execute checks before using something. Yeah, you cannot put something in without a check. Yeah, this is now guaranteed by the compiler and that's why it's uh, a useful pattern. If you use a lot of these or if you plan to use a lot of these, then I also recommend you to build a utility type. Let me show you the easiest way to do this. We can uh, build a brand type. Yeah? And uh, we will use generics here. So we will use uh, T for type and B for the brand. Um, and we will say that um, a branded type is basically the T type, the initial type, combined, so building an intersection with a brand property of type B. And then you can do the following. You can turn the not zero into the brand and you give it type arguments. You set then uh, the initial type, the primitive type to anything you like, for example, number, 
and then you specify the name for the brand, which uh, in my case here is not zero. And because we love TypeScript so much and want to type everything, I also recommend that we um, set some conditions on B because now we can also set B to something that is a number, 1337 for example, but we want it to be a string or I want it to be a string. So I will say that B has to extend a string, has to be of type string. Then I have to use string identifiers. I can't use then something like 1337. Uh, so this uh, will make it look very nice and easy and cute. <laughs> and I hope like it will help you to safeguard your code against invalid inputs. Last but not least, I want to highlight that when building assertion functions, please make sure that you test them. So if possible, build test code as uh, they are crucial then to your business application and uh, can lead to some corner cases. For example, we have an input here that is unknown and you may think, okay, I need to now narrow down this type. I need to uh, figure out what it is. So I will first check if this input is a number. So you will write if type of input equals number and then when it's a number, then you check if that number is zero. Yeah. And uh, I just made a typo here. If type of of uh, input equals number and uh, input is number then thrown error. Yes, that's what I wanted to write and that looks okay. And we don't have any compiler error here. And when we execute our code, we'll also get to see that it uh, crashes on dividing by zero. Now I have that condition that it needs to be of type number. So what happens if I actually put undefined? If I put undefined, it will survive because this assertion function here um, will just uh, think that this is not zero when passing it and the check will be passed because as undefined is not of type number, it uh, won't go here and it will not throw an error. So it will just execute. If we look then at the execution of the code, we will see that um, no crash happened. And if I lock the output of it, then I will get to see that we again have a value that we don't want to have because here it says not a number. So uh, the code continues and then it will calculate with not a number, which is not desirable. So really, really make sure that uh, the assertion functions are at the core of your business logic and are being properly tested.